The U.S. and China have agreed on a trade deal, but they seem to understand their deal in conflicting ways. And the ideological differences run deep. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode has been sponsored by Surfshark. Because when you surf the web, you should be using a VPN to protect your identity. America's trade war with China continues. But President Trump announced this month both countries have agreed on at least a temporary trade deal. As Trump wrote on his favorite platform, The deal I just made with China is by far the greatest and biggest deal ever made for our great patriot farmers in the history of our country. In fact, there is a question as to whether or not this much product can be produced. Our farmers will figure it out. Thank you, China. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow. That sounds like the greatest and biggest deal ever made in the history of our country. So here's what the great deal actually says. Uh, wait, uh, it doesn't say anything. Uh, Shelly, why are the notes blank? What's that? Nothing was actually written down? Uh, apparently what happened is that on October 11th, President Trump met with China's Vice Premier Liu He. Then Trump announced they had made phase one of a trade deal, but it was more of a handshake deal than a written down sort of deal. And like many handshake deals, each side remembers it a little differently. From Trump's perspective, China will buy as much as $50 billion in U.S. agricultural goods in exchange for the suspension of additional tariffs. Specifically, Trump has delayed the tariff increase that was originally going to go into effect on October 15th, on $250 billion of Chinese goods. But Trump has not reduced any existing tariffs or stopped future tariffs. But from China's perspective, coming out of that handshake, they still want more talks and would need existing tariffs rolled back in order to reach that $50 billion worth of agricultural imports. And instead of this month's handshake deal being phase one of the trade deal, China's vice premier said the meeting merely laid an important foundation for a phase one agreement. So where does that leave the U.S. and China? It's like Star Wars The Last Jedi. It's still unresolved, and overall, you're just left feeling disappointed. And will Rey and Kylo Ren fall in love or forever remain mortal enemies? Well, you won't have to wait much longer to find out. In both cases. As for the trade deal, we may get the next episode as soon as mid-November. That's when President Trump and Chinese leader Xi Jinping will meet at the APEC Forum in Chile, presumably after another one of those super awkward world leader family photos. Everyone loves those, especially Putin. So if Trump and Xi still need to meet in November to make the phase one deal, does that mean that October's meeting was a wash? This is what U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross told Fox News. Oh, no, I, th I think we're in a better place. And remember, for a while, there was no talk. It was broken off. Now they're back at the table. Clearly, they want to make a deal. We would like to make a deal. But from our point of view, it has to be the right deal. And it doesn't have to be in November. It's more critical that it be a proper deal than exactly when it occurs. So what would a proper deal involve? Well, phase one, the written kind, not the handshake kind, could reduce upcoming U.S. tariffs in exchange for China's promise to buy those American agricultural goods. That's important to Trump because making American farmers happy makes it easier for him to win the 2020 presidential election. And China, for its part, wants to have a deal too. U.S. tariffs over the last year plus have hurt the Chinese economy pretty hard. Last quarter, China's official statistics reported the lowest GDP growth in 27 years. Of course, everyone knows that they fudge the GDP numbers, but the fact that they let the official numbers go that low is a sign of a weakening economy. And a weak economy threatens Xi Jinping's grip on power. So that, along with Trump seeking re-election, means both sides want a phase one deal and the political brownie points that follow. But a phase one deal like this won't solve the fundamental trade problem. The Chinese regime has been cheating on trade for two decades, from intellectual property theft to forced technology transfers 
to illegal subsidies, and they continue to cheat. A final trade deal would need to resolve all these things. Maybe that's phase two, maybe that's phase seven, maybe that's phase never. But whenever it happens, it can't just be a pinky swear promise. Maybe the most important is enforcement, because the record hasn't been that great on enforcement, so we need to have a real enforcement mechanism. Yeah, and not great is like an understatement, right? I mean, the Chinese break promises all over town. They break promises with the WTO. They break promises with the U.S. How are you going to get that enforcement in there and get the Chinese to follow it? Well, if they don't, we really don't have much of an arrangement. No, you really don't. Which is why even if Trump and Xi sign something in November, it won't actually end the long-standing trade tensions between the U.S. and China. Those tensions come down to more than just trade and enforcement of WTO rules. There are deep ideological differences between the U.S. government and the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party insists on controlling all private enterprises. This article in the state-run People's Daily last week says that private companies must strengthen the work of party building. It says that nearly 1.6 million private companies inside China already have Communist Party branches within their structures, and the rest should follow their example. That's exactly the opposite of what the U.S. wants. The U.S. wants private companies to be, in fact, private, and not controlled by the whims of the Communist Party. Unless, of course, it means the Communist Party can force private companies to buy $50 billion in U.S. agricultural products. But let's conveniently ignore that little irony. And anyway, the ideological differences run deeper, because the U.S. and China are competing for geopolitical power, aka world domination. China pledges billions of dollars to Africa. The U.S. pledges billions of dollars to Africa. China pushes its companies to dominate 5G wireless communications. The U.S. pushes its own companies to dominate 5G. China wants to build an airport in Greenland. The U.S. wants to buy Greenland. So it's unclear if any trade deal can really solve these deep differences. And no matter what gets signed in November, it can only be phase one of a much bigger battle. And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark. When you go online, everything you do is being tracked and logged by the websites you visit and your internet service provider, and in many cases, by the government, especially if you're in a place like mainland China or Hong Kong, where this kind of tracking can put you at risk of surveillance and even arrest. That's why you should use a VPN like Surfshark to protect your identity. When you use Surfshark's clean mode, you'll be protected from ads, trackers, and malware and phishing attempts by Chinese hackers. Plus, with Surfshark, you can connect as many devices as you want. Try it out with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Surfshark has a special discount for China Uncensored fans. Go to Surfshark.com Uncensored and use the code Uncensored to get 83% off a two-year plan. Plus, get one extra month free. Protect yourself online. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.